News First, face to face with Shalom Benedict. It's almost the end of 2023. We're looking forward to what 2024 holds for us. However, the announcements that are coming uh, from the government towards the end of 2023 uh, shows a little bit of a grim situation in 2024. Uh, many experts as well as public representatives opine that 2024 is going to be a tough year for us Sri Lankans. Like we've not already had a tough year in 2023, but 2024 is going to be just a bit harder. Now to discuss these matters and of course uh, the political unfoldings that are due to take place in 2024, an election year, an important year, a year where Sri Lankans decide on their future. We've got with us the legal secretary of the Samagi Janabalavegia, President's Council, Farman Kasim. A very good evening, sir, and welcome to the show. Good, uh, good evening, Charlene. Thank you for having me. Um, President's Council Kasim, now speaking of uh, the political environment in Sri Lanka right now, uh, there is a bit of a confusion as to who is really in power because nobody seems to be wanting to take responsibility for these tax hikes. Now, understandably, certain level of tax hikes are uh, required to pull Sri Lanka out of this mess that we're in. Uh, also, simultaneously, action needs to be taken against those who brought Sri Lanka to this position in the first place because it is because of them, uh, make no mistake, it is because of them that you and I are paying all of these extra taxes, that you and I are suffering so much. So action needs to continue on that front. Action is not continuing. We will get into that uh, a little bit later. But uh, with regard to the tax hikes, even the SJB, I believe uh, Dr. Harsha, uh, made a statement saying that these tax hikes are too much. There is a way where we can reduce it slightly and manage it. And a plan was presented uh, by the opposition, uh, of course, not something that usually happens in Sri Lanka. But even members of the government, mainly the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna, doesn't seem to be wanting to take responsibility for this tax. I can say, look, it's we who increase the taxes. Uh, this, I'm speaking of a recent statement that was put out by former president Mahindra Rajapaksa saying that uh, you know, Ranil Vikramasinghe is in power. He has different policies than our policies. We are against the tax hike. What do you have to say to that? First of all, uh, we'll talk about Mahindra Rajapaksa's uh, statement. I mean, it draws all kinds of hypocrisy because you make that statement before you, after you vote for the budget. Then, uh, so his whole life has been a life of uh, hypocrisy in politics, unfortunately. So this is uh, the uh, this is the, uh, uh, the the biggest hypocrisy where he writes a letter, you know, uh, after voting for the budget and for the taxes. So what mind what president former president Mahindra Rajapaksa says and does cannot be taken seriously, because basically this proved uh, proves that he is a hypocrite. And uh, unlike us, the SJB, where we have put out our plans, certain plans as to how we can uh, ease the burden uh, on the people. We've given certain steps. Uh, we've given uh, blueprint one, blueprint two, and blueprint three as we go along, where we have keep kept on amending our blueprint. I won't go into the nitty gritties, but uh, what I'm trying to say is and emphasize is that uh, there has been no opposition mm. like the SJB, who's been helping the government and showing the government the way that there is alter, also an alternative way without you know without like the other parties like leftist parties trying to pull down the whole process and send us into a spiral of a further. For the disaster, we've been uh, giving constructive uh, uh, solutions, constructive mm. uh, proposals for the government to follow. But unfortunately, Ranil Vikramasinghe and Mahindra Rajapaksa and uh, Dhammi Kapoor and whoever is in parliament don't seem to realize and understand the situation and cannot work together in coherent in power, uh, which they are wielding. They, they wield a lot of power in parliament. They have 134, 150 seats or whatever you mm. call it. They have got the presidency, they got the prime minister, they got the best brains, they say. Seven brains was there, then uh, Dhammika Perra. So, I mean, with all the, with all the you know, tools in, at, dis, in, at their disposal, they just don't seem to know what they are doing. Uh, and, and ultimately, it's the people that suffer. Uh, so, President's Council, Farman Kasim, uh, we, if you look a little bit of the past, you know, lessons of the past teach us a lot about how the future will unfold. Uh, looking at the past elections in Sri Lanka, there has always been one main slogan uh, that was the driving force of an election campaign or the election in general. Uh, every candidate centered their policies, their arguments, their speeches around this uh, one slogan. Now, uh, back in 2015, 
It was uh, to end corruption, bring about good governance. Uh, back in 2019, it was national security, uh, a safe nation, one country, one law. That was the slogan. Now, what do you reckon the slogan for 2024 is going to be? Well, if I tell you that now, Shalan, I think I'll be giving a lot of uh, secrets of the SJB, <laughs> wouldn't it? And that would be politically very disadvantageous. But I think, uh, uh, having said that, uh, what the people are looking at is uh, uh, a leader and a party that has uh, sensibility, mm. has a good team around themselves, uh, good people around themselves mm. that can take us out of this uh, mess and, you know, work for the next five, ten years and project our economy uh, in, 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 the, in the positive way. Mm. Uh, so if you look at our history, uh, you see uh, the, UA, the, the right or the UMP, uh, without Ranil Vikramasinghe, mm. has ruled this country for 30 years, mm. so, uh, up to 94. Mm. And thereafter, with Ranil Vikramasinghe, he has been 30 years in the opposition. So, uh, if you if you look at uh, that, that is where the whole uh, dichotomy of the whole thing, Ranil Vikramasinghe's uh, leadership, you know, 30 mm. years he's been holding on to the leadership, mm. 30 years, it's only 30 years of uh, governance of this whole, of the country that the UMP has had. So we are the alternative now. I mean, we mm. are the we are the center. We are the center right uh, party, and after D S D S Dudley, Sir John J R, and President Premadasa, it is us that is uh, that that uh, you know is down that line and has the team mm. and has the leader who can bring us out uh, bring us out of this mess. I mean, I'm not just saying for the sake of saying, but uh, it's proven. It's proven facts. I mean, Ranil Vikramasinghe is a is a failure. I mean, mm. there's no doubt about it. Otherwise, he wouldn't lead a political party for 30 years without gaining power. I mean, so he's a he's a proven failure. Uh, the, the SLPP uh, block is also, I mean, proven failures beyond any doubt. The JVP, of course, is uh, a reckoning force in the sense like, you know, there's a lot of hype about them, but uh, I mean, uh, they are guys who haven't even run uh, any of them for a matter, has not done a job in their lives, nor run a, at least even a tea boutique to show that they can, you know, uh, prove themselves in anything. They were given power uh, in the in the Tissamarama or Tangal uh, Pradesh Sabha back mm. in 2001 and they lost the next election you know they didn't even get a single member there so that shows their utter failures also they were given four cabinet portfolios in the 2005 government under and uh, President uh, Chandrika Bandarai Kumar Tunga, I think when they formed that for coalition they were utter failures mm. uh, in fact uh, Vimal Viravansa and uh, all the crowd in the JVP were utter failures and mm. they reek with corruption I mean today the, uh, the, 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 the mem their members had so much of corruption and inefficiency. Uh, so, uh, I mean, when you look at our team, you know, it's like uh, uh, Sajid Premadas, uh, uh, guys like Sujiva Sena Singh, uh, uh, Harsha Fernando, uh, Harsha, Harsha De Silva, uh, Iran, Kabir Hashim, uh, Bandulal, who are not in parliament even. Mm. You know, the, the team is uh, really good, uh, guys like Ravi Samaravir. Uh, Sudit, uh, Sudit uh, Pereira, I mean, we have a super team that can take this country forward. So, Mr. Kalsam, speaking about, you know, teams and the SJB being clean, recently during the Yuktia uh, operation, there was a member of the SJB um, who was arrested for the possession of drugs. What action has the SJB taken against him? So, we have suspended him mm. uh, uh, forthwith and we will be taking steps to sack him from the party. Mm. Uh, you have to do it in a proper way, as you know, your, your uh, young <laughs> budding lawyer, that uh, the, there is always the rule of all the other mm. parties. So you have to give him a, a chance to explain himself. Yes. And uh, I don't want to comment that he will be found guilty because I'll be part of the process. So mm. uh, if he's found guilty, he'll be sacked from the party. Uh, and the, the, the thing there is, uh, 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 Sharon, uh, our leader won't come to the rescue. Like he wouldn't, if they were caught in his house, he wouldn't take a helicopter and go and land there and try mm. to save him or something like that, you know. Sajid Premadas is not a person like that. Where we have seen in the past, you know, where, when there was a raid, uh, where there was a raid for drug, where the, the president went and uh, landed his helicopter there and saved this guy. Hmm. So, uh, the SJB doesn't stand for that, uh, Sajid Premadasa doesn't stand for that, Rajit Mandumbanda doesn't stand for that, hmm. and the whole party doesn't stand for that. Hmm. So, that is where the, dif where the difference is. Hmm. You have to let the process go. I mean, uh, the, any, any political party is not of angels. I mean, you don't get angels joining a party or, you know, <laughs> Uh, Lily White, uh, people Lily White joining a party, you get all sorts joining a party, but the test is, once you do something wrong, you have to pay the price. Hmm. Like Lee Kuan you did in Singapore, you know. Right. So, speaking of uh, the rule of law in Sri Lanka, people have seemed to lose faith in law enforcement authorities uh, because now, 
as we know, for a country to have a proper rule of law, there are several stakeholders. It's not just the judiciary, but the judiciary will act based on the evidence that is presented by law enforcement authorities, the Attorney General's Department, and there have been many issues in this entire judicial process, uh, including the other stakeholders as well. One of the main key issues is the fact that prosecutions are not taking place properly. There are always holes in cases that are supposedly, allegedly, intentionally put there by several prosecutors so that uh, those who are uh, suspects in these cases will you know, get a chance to go scot-free. Um, so there have been many massive scams in Sri Lanka that have gone unaddressed, no justice whatsoever. The SLPP came into power promising justice for the Easter Sunday attack, for the central bank bond scam. Now those two issues are not even spoken of. It's, it's almost like kryptonite against uh, the government, even speaking of it. So what action is realistically possible against these issues? Because it's been so long and, as you know, evidence uh, gets destroyed, evidence, evidence gets misplaced, officers are changed. There are a lot of practical issues. So realistically looking forward, um, what can be done? What kind of promise can the people expect to be kept by a government? Uh, of the SJP. See, making a sweeping statement that prosecutors, uh, there are holes. I mean, we have good, very good prosecutors. Definitely. We have, uh, we have good investigators. It's just that they need to be given the confidence and they need to be given the power to do their job. Mm. Uh, I would say uh, uh, if we say that, you know, there are certain holes in certain investigations and prosecutions, the ideal way would be have to have an ombudsman who can, you know, go through these matters and see whether they actually... Because without research and without uh, fact-finding, we can't come to conclusions. That's not fair on Do you mean in, 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 the, in, the, in the so the structure of an independent in, prosecutor's in, in office? The pro independent prosecutor's office is the final goal. If okay, you can, right. Like in Malaysia, if you can have an independent prosecutor's office, mm. apart from the Attorney General's, General's Department. Department. But until we do that, if we can have an ombudsman to say, if somebody says that, you know, for example, you say that, you know, you're not happy with certain investigation, mm. to go into see go into the facts and see whether this investigation has been done properly, right. whether the prosecutor has done his job properly, mm. and come to those findings. With regards to the, all these scams that have happened, uh, even Rani Vikramasinghe promised uh, justice for the Easter mm. attacks. In fact, he said he'll get the Scotland Yard done when he was in the opposition. Mm. But now, let alone Scotland Yard, he's traveled 14 countries in the world. All over the world, he could have got, uh, he could have got uh, uh, help from anywhere. Mm. He went to America, he went out to all over the world, right, and uh, spending public money. Uh, and uh, Abu Dhabi hasn't said what he has gained, hmm. but uh, he could have easily uh, invited uh, a foreign uh, or independent uh, investigation, which he did not do. Uh, so, you, I mean, uh, what what uh, Sajid Premadas has openly stated, and what the SJB stand is that we will definitely have an independent panel, hmm. probably a hybrid panel. Uh, hmm. That is what my suggestion was uh, to the party that we don't have an international panel, we don't mm. have a local panel, but we have a hybrid panel, probably consisting of five five investigators, two foreign investigators, mm. and three from Sri Lanka, who was a chairman, so that then they, is, they will see, you have to have the buy-in of the, uh, of the community, community well. international community, as well as the community in Sri Lanka. Mm. Uh, so there will be some buy-in, and uh, that they will show some sort of independence uh, that we can move forward with. Because with regards to the central bank bond scam, uh, Sharin, uh, unfortunately, there is no scam at the moment because uh, all three cases were dismissed in the high court. Hmm. And uh, everybody talks about a scam, uh, very uh, throw it around very lightly, but uh, in the eyes of the law, hmm. there seems to be no scam up to date. There has been no scam? There has been no scam because uh, nobody seems to understand exactly what the bond scam is, to understand how the interest, uh, what a bond is, how the interest uh, rates play. Hmm. Because uh, uh, the, the uh, Attorney General uh, indicted uh, uh, on some 14,000 charges uh, or so. Charges and uh, in which, with, with regards to criminal breach of trust. Hmm. But uh, unfortunately, when you go into criminal breach of trust, uh, buying a uh, treasury bill is not criminal breach of trust. You are giving money, and how can you steal somebody else's money? So, hmm. so nobody was able to figure out what a treasury bond is and how it happens. Whether there was. Uh, inside information, conflict of interest is a different matter. Mm. But at the moment, there doesn't seem to be a scam. So we, we, we can't really refer to it as a central bank bond scam anymore because there is no scam. There is no scam, there is no uh, indictment, <laughs> there is no uh, case in court. There's nothing. Yeah. There is nothing. So so this whole rant and that the election promise on bringing the bond scam thieves to justice, I think um, what was said by the current uh, Prime Minister, no less, is that uh, uh, Mahadawale Mahabanku Kadua 
that's what he said. Those are these exact words. But um, turns out that's not true. It's not true at all. I mean, uh, they sell PPI. I mean, and that that cohort of uh, you know that side have been always saying these things. No, mm. these are very attractive to the people. Ma, bank mm. over dawa like I do. Like you go in and take money from the central bank. I mean, mm. no. But the common man must be thinking uh, that, that it, it it is so. But uh, that is not so. These are very intricate uh, crimes, if at all. Mm. And it needs a lot of expertise. Needs a lot of uh, legal reforms. Mm. See, this is a good uh, opportunity, Sharon, for Sri Lanka to go in to see and uh, go in and see how uh, the white collar criminals, if at all. Mm. I'm not saying that there was uh, there was any criminality, but again, what I say is there has to be an investigation on how this exactly happened. Nobody has gone and had a forensic. Uh, Study to see how exactly a bond works. What exactly is a bond? Or how did this happen? Mm. Are there enough sufficient laws? Mm. That's mm. how other countries pro progress. You know, we have to without sh shouting from the rooftop saying it's a scam, scam. We have to go in and see what exactly a bond is. What was this? Uh, what exactly happened? Mm. What are, do we have? The suf do we have sufficient laws? Mm. And mm. then you know, create uh, and uh, legislate those laws to prevent uh, these kind of things happening in the future. If at all something has happened. Mm. Uh, now, President's Council Farman Qasim, usually, uh, again, looking at the past, things that happened in the past, when we come close to an election, we always see these communal issues uh, cropping up. Uh, now, I'm not saying that uh, it is definitely going to happen next year, but I would uh, place a substantial bet on the possibility that it could definitely happen next year because that's what always happens there are communal issues that are brought about um, you get uh, a few religious leaders from from different communities coming out and making uh, controversial statements uh, i believe there were statements made recently also uh, but uh, no steps were taken um, so with regard to that issue um, how, how is the uh, sjb planning on you know getting beyond that now we haven't quite seen the sjb making those kind of statements or, or going down that path but um, you can be rest assured that that will be uh, a featured conversation at the upcoming uh, run-up to the election? Well, it will be a featured conversation, not for us. Mm -hmm. It might be a featured conversation for the other parties. We have never been, uh, uh, we have never been uh, part and parcel of this uh, anti-religious, anti-ethnic uh, kind of slogans that go on. Our party uh, is a multi-pluralistic, multicultural, multi-whatever you call it, you know, you know, we accept everybody and anybody. Mm. Uh, who believe in our in our ideologies? Um, uh, well, uh, we don't want to go down that path and mention these things because, uh, as our leader has always said, we are all Sri Lankans. We, he's, he's, if he becomes president, he'll be the president for all Sri Lankans, mm. and he believes in one race, which is Sri Lankan. Mm. So that's his uh, philosophy, and that's how we will deal with it. Uh, uh, but it's a it's a very attractive slogan. It's a very attractive slogan. Being uh, racial, being uh, eth ethnic oriented, is a very attractive slogan, which uh, we only can hope and pray that Sri Lankans don't fall uh, uh, prey to again. Because uh, once you start wishing for something, it happens. Hmm. Like the slogan "Kanna natat inna ratak," hmm. that actually happened. No? <laughs> Kanna natat inna ratak. So after Kanna, so we didn't have enough food to eat, but we have a country now. So when you wish for something, you know sometimes your prayers are answered. Mm. When 22 uh, five, or 69 million people or whatever it is pray for something, mm. you get it. So, we, which we got. Mm. That was the slogan. No? Mm. Mm. So, if we keep praying for something, that can happen. So, if we go down this line again, mm. uh, that could happen. Also, I blame to a certain extent the media <coughs> houses. You know, this, if you look at the news uh, in any, any mainstream media, mm. out of the 30 minutes, you get about 20 minutes of voice cuts and voice cuts and voice, voice cuts are not news. Uh, you know, I think. But uh, of course, when they're made for by, by, by responsible authorities and those, the content of those uh, voice cuts impact no, the lives of everyone. No, I think, I think these voice cuts, if the media houses don't hold the mics in front of them, that they won't have a forum to have uh, have uh, stay, give statements. If if I'm a very radical kind of a guy, and you know, everybody wants to, if I say something, you know, for example, well, the majority like to hear, mm -hmm. and when they are mic, I get an audience. So, you see, if I had, if I had uh, the choice, Sharon, I would tell the media houses have an ethics committee. You have half an hour news. You show five minutes of Sri Lankan news, in the sense, actual Sri Lankan news. Mm -hmm. Five minutes of foreign news, actually. Five minutes of business news, sports news, and get this voice cut thing out, you know, because it doesn't serve the purpose of anybody except for ratings. <laughs> well, well, I, I can yeah. assure you that news first. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 not, I'm, I'm, ethical standards. I, 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 I'm, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not blaming any. Hmm. Else, but I'm saying, in general, if you look at news, it's a dismal story that you uh, see every day. You know, some murder, somewhere, some rape, somewhere, something going. Nothing positive about Sri Lankan business news. Nothing positive about Sri Lankan progressing. Also depends on where you but, look. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So. 
that also that also counts it's not only the politicians mm. but everybody is to blame in this whole thing even even minutely yeah. So, moving forward, of course, uh, next year is, is an election year. There are many election promises coming about. Uh, now, since you are, of course, uh, from the as the legal secretary of the SJB, you know the inner workings of the party. You're in the inner circle of the party. Um, with regard to the program with the IMF, now Sri Lanka has set on a certain path. And what we usually see is that uh, there is a government of uh, green, then a government of blue comes around. They change the entire policy 180 degrees. Then a government of green comes back. They change that policy once again 180 degrees. So it's a lot of pulling onto both sides and Sri Lanka not really moving anywhere. Now we find ourselves flat on the ground and trying to stand up. So with regard to you know changing this agreement or, or moving away from this agreement, uh, at a time when Sri Lanka is awaiting, um, you know, consent from our creditors on the restructuring program, do you does the SJB is the SJB actively looking into changing these plans, or are you all planning on going about with it to a certain degree and maybe switching gears somewhere in the middle? What's the plan? See, we when when this whole catastrophe happened, mm. we were the first to come out and say go to the IMF. Mm. So going to the IMF is sine qua non that has to happen. Mm. But see, you can always negotiate. Uh, you can negotiate, you can talk to them, and if they, if the IMF and the donors, the Paris Club, China, India, mm. all know that there is a genuine government, a genuine person involved, you know, they we can space out uh, various, uh, various uh, conditions to us. Mm. We will definitely work with the IMF. We will mm. definitely work with the Paris Club. We will definitely work with China and India, and uh, we have to uh, convince, uh, convince those stakeholders that a developed Sri Lanka is good for the whole world. Hmm. If Sri Lanka goes down burning, it's bad for the whole world. If there is some sort of chaos, if there is some sort of civil war, it's bad for the whole region. So we need to convince uh, India, China, the Paris Club, IMF, all that, that Sri Lanka needs to develop. And only if Sri Lanka develops, that the region, uh, that, can, that develop. the region can develop and hmm. that there is going to be some good happening out of it. At the moment, uh, our president, except for traveling with his cohort of friends or friends and family or whatever, whoever, uh, doesn't seem to be doing anything. I mean, has, has he come forward and said, you know, I went to Dubai, I went to Cuba, I went, you know, to one or two other places. This is what we have gained from this trip of mine. Mm -hmm. See, we have to hold our leaders accountable. For even, 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 uh, even when uh, Sajid Premdasa becomes an ex-president, if he leaves the country, mm -hmm. for, uh, thankfully he has not left for the last four years like uh, Andhra Kumar Desanayaka and uh, Anil Vikramasinghe and the others uh, traveled in the globe. Uh, come and say, you know, by going on this trip, this is what Sri Lanka gained mm. in rupees and cents or in uh, bilateral relations. This is what we gain. We need to, uh, I think, uh, hold our re leaders responsible. And that would be a good thing for News First also to say, uh, ask, you know, where you went on your last trip, mm. so and so. What did Sri Lanka gain from this? Mm. You know, that's a good thing, good practice to uh, start. You know, ask the president's office, what did we gain from his tour to Dubai? Mm. This COP to the, uh, whatever that he went for, climate change, what has Sri Lanka gained from this? Mm. In this year, uh, mm. no point talking about 2048. No, mm. it doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, also speaking of, um, there are you know controversial um, discussions surrounding the Thirteenth Amendment um, and, and devolution of power. Uh, does the SJB have a definitive stand on these matters? How does the party plan on proceeding? Yes. Yeah, so, if I put it very bluntly, we are for a uh, unitary state mm. that is a must i mean uh, i don't think we can wear off that mm. but within that unitary state uh, we have to talk to the stakeholders in the north mm. and the uh, i don't think the east is a is, is the north uh, uh, the dna or the north whoever represents the north and the tamil people i mean mm. it's not let's not tag it to a political party mm. and uh, come to a certain uh, understanding on how far we can go in devolution uh, nine provinces for Sri Lanka doesn't make sense to me, to be very frank, as 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 a as a as a administrative uh, tool. Mm -hmm. Probably two or three, maybe you know, where we can comp where each province can compete against each other, like in India. Mm -hmm. But we can't go the full hog like India or any other state. But uh, I'm sure the Tamil people will be happy if they see some development coming. So we have to first show our genuinity, you know. Mm -hmm. If we can help the, in the north with what is happening, what we help the south with also, mm. then after five or ten years, they will buy in and say, look here, we don't need a uh, separate uh, provincial council for us because we, we are getting whatever we had from the center. Mm. The whole complaint is that no, 
the whole complaint apart from being the political complaint the economic complaint is that we don't get what the south is getting hmm. so once there is a genuine leader and a genuine party and working for the north hmm. i think that call for a separate council with so much of powers will end hmm. that's my personal opinion and 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 does the sjb in any way plan on 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 doing away with the provincial councils because there were there was uh, certain you know stakeholders that made statements like that not from the sjb uh, but from other political parties uh, mm. does the sjb have a similar no no idea? we have uh, we have said we will uh, <coughs> abide by the constitution of the country Consti the uh, constitution of the country has a 13th amendment mm. uh, the constitution of the country is being violated now by that being not implemented mm. but we will stick by the 13th amendment we will stick by the provincial councils but we'll see how we can tweak it by getting into this understanding and you know, see how far we can go with it mm. we, we will definitely stick by the provincial council no, no, no doubt about it mm. but i uh, i had uh, earlier was what my personal opinion how to get over this whole haggling of uh, how much power how much less power what power do we need kind of thing mm. so also moving forward next year besides a presidential election there is also um, a general election that is slated to be held uh, do you think that election will also be held in 2024 um, there were uh, members from your party who were calling for the presidential and the parliamentary election to be held together however that scenario is quite unlikely uh, do you think the parliamentary election will also come about next year uh, well that of course i'm not a soothsayer <laughs> but uh, Well, the president can call for the parliamentary election even anytime. today. Even today, mm. yeah. So after two and a half years uh, of the life of the parliament, he could have called uh, uh, election, uh, election, uh, mm. pres uh, parliamentary election. Mm. Even a presidential <laughs> election, it's arguable whether he can call it or not. It has not been tested. Uh, my, my opinion would be the constitution is a living, breathing document, mm. and he is uh, uh, the 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 term where he can call it uh, the the period that he can call the election of four years are brought in by an amendment by jr mm. uh it was six years initially mm. and then to bring it to call the election for four years was brought in by jr for his convenience so uh, it was brought in for a sitting president mm. but now he now this president is a nominated president so whether he can call it or not is a bit of a controversy but he doesn't have the mandate no? Mm. morally and ethically he doesn't have the mandate mm. so the best thing for him to do is would have been is to call for an election mm. nobody is going to challenge that nobody is going to say you are breaking the constitution mm. and it's also arguable so but my bet is that ranil wickremesinghe will uh, wait till the last day of his presidency mm. and see that it expires and then have the election so the most sensible thing would have been to call the gender, to call the presidential election mm. and then with that momentum have the parliament and then whoever can govern can govern i mean that mm. would be a per, who, that's what would a person who loves the country would do mm. but uh, i think our our leaders are otherwise but um, whatever said or done uh, president council farman kasim next year uh, the general public will get an opportunity to choose their leaders sri lanka has been having universal franchise for quite some time now uh, we've chosen certain leaders Uh, there are leaders who've done good there are leaders who've done bad there are leaders who've done both but at the end of the day since the general public are the ones who are voting these leaders into power uh, the general public also does have a responsibility to vote the right people into power because voting the wrong people into power uh, well i think everybody has got a taste of what that would look like in the future uh, sri lanka of course will face a much more serious situation in the future if all of us don't vote for the right person next year uh, and and we at news first will keep you abreast of the latest information uh, make sure that whatever decision that you make is an informed decision and it's up to you to make it thank you very much president council farman kasim for joining us on face to face this evening thank you very much to all our viewers out there once again for tuning into another episode we will see you again same time same place tomorrow until then take care and god bless thank you